Hello everyone and welcome to AI with Sohini where we talk about anything and everything AI. In today's special session, I am going to be reviewing my experience as I presented our paper on dynamics at Reliable ML Workshop at the top conference called NeurIPS in San Diego in December of 2025. The whole theme around the conference was around agentic AI. That means how personalized shopping or personalized marketing, personalized sale or personalized anything is revolving around in the industry. I will show you how there are the latest inventions that are happening in the area of vision so that AI generated videos or movies are becoming more and more realistic and how the next directions are showing much promise around major video along with agentic simulations. So if this is of interest to you, please subscribe to this channel. And if you're wondering what these boxes are at my background, that is my next video around AI products for end of this year, 2025. So subscribe and follow for more. So here is our presentation regarding the year of 2025 at the NeurIPS AI conference, which was truly a year of agentic AI. So first off, I'm going to review all of the different agentic products that were visible on the exhibition floors, all of the different shops um, that were treating the, the visitors around what their latest and greatest products are uh, with regards to AI, the different workshop topics that I personally attended, and the different frontiers of video and imaging uh, that I was able to attend, and some of the future directions that I foresee for 2026. First off, I wanted to start with the little caveat that Europe 2025 hosted 30,000 attendees in two different cities of San Diego, along with Mexico City. And mostly the people were interested in what is the state of the art for agentic frameworks. But the best outcome for uh, Europe 2025 was paperlantern.ai. So what happened was the, the conference uh, was using AtConf as its major capability tool uh, in order to connect uh, researchers along with others who are interested in that topic. However, for 30,000 people, that particular app was failing. At that point, the conference decided to put all of their papers and dump them into a LLM, a large language model, and the user interface that was generated was just hosted, and this became Paper Lantern at NeurIPS. Paper Lantern is an extremely strong mechanism in order for you to search for um, you know, specific papers that are of interest to you. So let's say I want to know, um, you know, research papers in the in the area of uh, personalized uh, medicine. And you see that it is automatic corrections and it is able to you know, figure out what the latest papers are. Uh, and the, the major advantage of the system was it was extremely user friendly along with it was uh, able to synchronize itself at a mobile phone. So as you can see, this was an extremely strong tool uh, that you could use in order to find out some of the latest and greatest research in your area of interest. This product was launched in less than two hours. It is very easy to come up with user interfaces and to host very strong um, you know, search tools that are capable of searching a huge plethora of research papers. So at this conference, I was personally presenting our paper called Dynamics. Dynamics is a core machine learning model. And what it really does is it, is, it uses the user's attention. So let's say that you are on a particular uh, platform and you are searching or scrolling scrolling through a, a whole plethora of feeds. Uh, let's say you are on Pinterest and you are looking at a lot of different um, you know, kinds of, of pages. If you are constantly scrolling across, that means you're an active user versus somebody who's passively watching a page but not really engaged in scrolling activity. In that case, you are a passive user. So what our system does is for an active user, we give them more video signal so that if you are constantly scrolling, the next thing that you see would be a video regarding a product that we think is most relevant to you and that has shown to boost the overall click-through rate or the overall engagement 
for the user to see relevant ads. However, if somebody is passive, the best outcome would be to give them more field signal and give them less of video so that they don't get uh, absolutely overwhelmed or overburdened with videos which is not relevant to them. And in this process, giving them more field signal brings them to be more active, makes them more predictable. And this whole process has shown to overall improve the click through rate for uh, you know personalized marketing and personalized shopping and the paper and all of the links that I'm going to be presenting today are in the description box below next i wanted to talk about the shopify agent so shopify this time has one of the largest floors and they were talking about how they are using commerce large language model and it is using hstu hierarchical sequential uh, units in order to come up with uh, the, a personalized uh, shopping experience what they do right, is so they don't just utilize a singular session in order to predict what's going to come in the in the future but the hierarchical model actually takes a history of what people really engaged with and what they haven't in order to really figure out what a cumulative future is going to look like and that's the reason why this is more accurate and more personalized for viewing as well as for merchandising so if you are a merchant who really wants to sell their products versus a viewer who really wants more relevant products to be seen in their own field HS2 is the best mechanism that can help these future directions. As a next and the major topic of the conference, I attended this huge sessions around video generation models. So typically, if you use Nano Banana or some of the other uh, agentic methods that can take you know a particular image and generate short gifs out of them they have some major drawbacks the drawbacks are that they can only do a, a limited number of frames and also sometimes the, the the frames end up being in a loop and they are not very realistic in this case so video generation models what it is showing that it is improving the duration and now it can generate up to 17 frames a second and it can go up to longer up to 20 minutes of longer contextual video can get formed and this is showing that the that the embeddings nature for AI generated content is becoming more and more realistic and it is more and more lifelike next I wanted to show you this movie this was from one of these uh, presenters from gem or from Google and how they showed that this whole video was artificially generated and as you can see the environment the background along with the front uh, along with the foreground the saturation the color and even small details are are now able to modify and change along with the thematic that the user can provide. Next off was this presentation again from Google that showed that their latest product which is now creating tracklets around different objects. So let's say that you have an image and now a user is creating tracklets in order to show a movement in a particular direction. So you create a tracklet around the top book and ask it to float in the air and then land on the table then that is the automation that gets generated. So you can literally have a face and then have a chocolate have your face being propagated and moved in multiple direction so in this case the video is not a hundred percent automatically generated but there is some amount of of manual impact which is very minimal in order to generate these artificial videos altogether next i wanted to point out at some of the papers that are extremely key in order to also identify fake images from realistic images. So in this particular paper by the Princeton University, what they did was they, they took a lot of images that were actually realistic as well as they were fake images. And then they used boxes in order for the users to annotate if it looked realistic versus if something that looked fake. As you can see here, the dog's foot looks fake, uh, but the head actually looks, uh, looks accurate. So by this way, uh, there was a lot of labels that got generated as to which part of the image looks realistic as to which part that looks fake and here the outcome was if you have an image that can be explained in natural language then that is the easiest to point out if it's a real versus a fake the next paper that was of importance was called petri net structure and here the the major idea was to use domain specific prompts and, and semantics to better inform a generative model in order to do video generation. So here the synthetic frame generation used the Petri structure 
petri net structure in order to generate the synthetic frames um, in order to represent the key process and the transitions that are required from one scene to the other in order to keep it as a realistic as possible so this improves the temporal coherence enhances the semantic fidelity and it keeps things real as long as the videos or the images uh, that it is analyzing is indoor images because it just shows that these petri net structures are able to fuse multiple different dimensionality of indoor videos in order to generate very realistic um, you know videos for indoor situations finally i wanted to talk through some directions for 2026 where i believe two major areas are going to come up one is going to be with regards to standardization of ai frameworks where there are multiple ai llms or agentic frameworks that are trying to talk to one another but for whatever reason there has to be a standardization so that the number of loops or the disagreements between them can be brought down and secondly i really believe in 2026 we are going to see a huge push towards prompt to video generation and them being as accurate as possible as realistic and as accurate as possible but with some manual intervention it's not going to be fully prompt generated but with some manual interventions in order to ensure that the videos are realistic because manual intervention is the only way to make sure your final outcomes are real and not just a fake plethora of an infinite simulation which is not feasible at all if this is of interest to you please subscribe and follow for more